Good morning and welcome to SJPC News. Why We Dance presents a free dance event this afternoon from 1 to 4 p.m. here at St. John's. Come celebrate Why We Dance in their 15th year providing free dance events to the community. There will be refreshments and prizes. See Sister Candace Waller, director for Why We Dance for additional details. It's revival time here at St. John's. We hope you will join us for Fresh Fire Fridays as we will have amazing guest preachers each week beginning at 7 p.m. This Friday, Reverend Daryl Griffin of Monumental Baptist Church of Jersey City will come and bring a word you don't want to miss. We look forward to seeing you. The Men's Fellowship Next Breakfast will be on Saturday, October 5th at 8.30 a.m. All are welcome to come and enjoy prayer, fellowship, and a delicious meal. The Women's Auxiliary of the General Baptist Convention of New Jersey need our help. Their annual mission project will be with Lunch Break of Red Bank. The Lunch Break facility offers daily servings of lunches and box lunches for people in the area. They also have a food pantry that distributes food and other items daily. Donations needed are cereal, oatmeal, applesauce, canned fruit, and assorted canned beans. Donations are needed by Thursday, October 10th. Please see Sister Janet Jasper, Women's Auxiliary President, for additional details. The next Senior Ministry Lunch and Learn will be on Wednesday, October 16th at 11 a.m. Our topic this month, Cyber Security Protection and What You Need to Know. We encourage our St. John's family to bring a friend and enjoy a delicious lunch. Join the St. John's Senior Ministry for a fabulous trip to the Brownstone in Patterson, New Jersey on December 12th for the production, I Love to Praise His Name. Tickets are $95 and include show, meal, transportation, and gratuities. Tickets sell out fast, so get yours today. Reservations can be made with a $25 deposit. Please see Sister Sharon Carey for reservations and additional details. As we pray for our bereaved members and families, let us also keep in prayer those with health challenges and concerns. Join us every Sunday morning at 8.30 a.m. for Sunday School. Let us gather and study the Word together. Join Pastor Wallace and the St. John's family on Wednesday evenings at 7 p.m. for Bible study. We will continue this lively discussion by Zoom, so be sure to have signed up to receive our emails so you are added to the weekly invite. Are you on the call? Join Pastor Wallace and the St. John's family for our weekly devotion and prayer call every Wednesday and Sunday morning at 7 a.m. Start your morning with a word from on high and be blessed by prayer. The dial-in number is 425-436-6308. Access code 312522. If you have not signed up to receive email notifications from the church, Take a moment to do so and go to our church website at www.stjohnscotchplains.org and sign up today to receive email notifications that will keep you connected with us. The work of St. John's continues because of you. We are extremely thankful for your continued financial support, whether your stewardship is during Sunday morning worship, online by simple give, Zelle, Cash App, Giveify, text, or mail to the church. We are grateful for your giving. If you find that our services have been a blessing to you and you have not yet subscribed to our YouTube channel, please do so and click the subscribe button so you receive an alert when new services are posted. Additionally, 
If you are looking for a church home, do consider St. John's. The doors of the church are open and we welcome you in. Here at the Dome, the building has reopened and we look forward to seeing you in person. Have a blessed day. the Lord. All my soul and all that is within me, bless his holy name.
your hands together on this one. Song you know, it says, oh, magnify the Lord, for he is worthy to be praised.
this is the day that the Lord has made. This is the day that the Lord has made. This, this, this is the day that the Lord has made. This is the day that the Lord has made. I can't hear you. This is the day that the Lord has made. We ought to be glad and rejoice in it. For I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord, for enter to his gates with thanksgiving, and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him, and bless his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endures to all generations. Shall we pray, our Father and our God, Lord, we come saying thank you, God. Thank you for this day. This day, O oh God, that you have given us, Lord, to serve you. Lord, we say thank you for this opportunity, Lord, to lift up your name. And, oh God, we ask right now, Lord, we invoke your presence, oh God, that you would come into this tabernacle and dwell with us for just a little while. Lord, we know that you're able to do anything. And, oh God, we ask that you would do your miraculous things that you're capable of. And God, we invite you in that you would take control of this service. Bless our musicians, bless those who shall take part in it, and bless the waiting congregation, O oh God, that you would meet their needs, Lord. Those that are on the way, we grant them safe traveling mercies, O oh God. Those who look in online, Lord, we ask them that you would give them the desires of their heart. And all these blessings we ask in the name of Jesus, amen, amen, and praise God. Yes, our morning scripture this morning is the Psalms number 37 verses 1 through 9. Fret not yourself because of evildoers. Be not envious of wrongdoers, for they will soon fade like the grass and wither like the green herb. Trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and befriend faithfulness. Delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. Commit your way to the Lord. Trust in him and he will act. He will bring forth your righteousness as the light and your justice as the noonday. Be still before the Lord and wait patiently for him. Fret not yourself over the one who prospers in his way, over the man who carries out evil devices. Refrain from anger and forsake wrath. Fret not yourself, it tends only to evil. For the evildoers shall be cut off, but those who wait for the Lord shall inherit inherit the land. Thus ends the reading of God's word. Our morning hymn this morning. Our morning hymn, this little light of mine. I'm gonna let it shine 
Good morning and welcome to SJPC News. Why We Dance presents a free dance event this afternoon from 1 to 4 p.m. here at St. John's. Come celebrate Why We Dance in their 15th year providing free dance events to the community. There will be refreshments and prizes. See Sister Candace Waller, director for Why We Dance for additional details. It's revival time here at St. John's. We hope you will join us for Fresh Fire Fridays as we will have amazing guest preachers each week beginning at 7 p.m. This Friday, Reverend Daryl Griffin of Monumental Baptist Church of Jersey City will come and bring a word you don't want to miss. We look forward to seeing you. The Men's Fellowship Next Breakfast will be on Saturday, October 5th at 8.30 a.m. All are welcome to come and enjoy prayer, fellowship, and a delicious meal. The Women's Auxiliary of the General Baptist Convention of New Jersey need our help. Their annual mission project will be with Lunch Break of Red Bank. The Lunch Break facility offers daily servings of lunches and box lunches for people in the area. They also have a food pantry that distributes food and other items daily. Donations needed are cereal, oatmeal, applesauce, canned fruit, and assorted canned beans. Donations are needed by Thursday, October 10th. Please see Sister Janet Jasper, Women's Auxiliary President, for additional details. The next Senior Ministry Lunch and Learn will be on Wednesday, October 16th at 11 a.m. Our topic this month, Cyber Security Protection and What You Need to Know. We encourage our St. John's family to bring a friend and enjoy a delicious lunch. Join the St. John's Senior Ministry for a fabulous trip to the Brownstone in Patterson, New Jersey on December 12th for the production, I Love to Praise His Name. Tickets are $95 and include show, meal, transportation, and gratuities. Tickets sell out fast, so get yours today. Reservations can be made with a $25 deposit. Please see Sister Sharon Carey for reservations and additional details. As we pray for our bereaved members and families, let us also keep in prayer those with health challenges and concerns. trust that you would bear our announcements in mind, keeping our announcements in mind uh, with one correction. I do believe I saw the senior ministry. That date is uh, October the 16th at 11 a.m. at 11 a.m. for the senior ministry for the senior ministry. By way of other announcements, uh, baptism will be held on the first Sunday of October, which is October, uh, October 6th, we'll have baptism will take place before morning service. And those candidates will be advised as to uh, the items that they need to, to bring. Keep our announcement in mind, especially uh, Friday with the Fresh Fire Friday. It would be sad that we have visitors and nobody came from St. John's. We're looking forward to seeing and hearing a great word from this preacher, from the, uh, this Reverend Darrell Griffin of the Monumental Baptist Church of Jersey City, New Jersey, will be our celebrant that night, that evening. And we should, I think we should make a conscious effort to be, to be out here to enjoy and revive our souls, you know? Don't, don't, you know, sometimes we get tired. I know, you know, some of us, maybe we just keep on going like the Energizer Bunny. But sometimes I get tired and I need to have my soul revived. And I'm looking forward to those Friday evenings when we shall be blessed by men and women uh, throughout uh, the month of October. 
to, uh, to bless our souls and to revive us to go on to do a greater work for the Lord. Uh, the, uh, Brother Brandon McCune would like to meet with the men, the men immediately after service. Uh, that would take place. I don't know if you're meeting in the sanctuary here, right here on uh, the left by the um, instruments uh, for a short meeting, for a me short meeting. Do we have any visitors with us here today? Visitors? Visitors? No visitors? We's all family? We's all family? Well, so good to see family today. So good to see our, 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 our family. It is good to be here. Um, you know, I don't take it lightly to be able to be here because you know how God, somebody didn't make it today. Not saying in this church, but somewhere, somewhere. So we shouldn't take it lightly that we're just going to be here. So I enjoy seeing each and every one, enjoying Sunday school and enjoying just being in your, in your presence. But you know, sometimes people might have issues in their lives, things that might not go right. Oh, but before we do that, any other, any other of these late September birthdays? Any September birthdays? Today's the 29th and 30th, oh, yes! Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. It is your opportunity to stand. We got, we got what, two more days? Two more days of September? And then we're going to move on to October. Well, I can't wait because I ain't till next year. And I, I, I know Pastor's been saying we're going to have this cake. Boy, that's going to be a big cake. I'm telling you. <laughs> As we have gone through most of the year and, and have not really celebrated, but I know we're going to be having a, 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 a little uh, collation, what they used to say, collation after service to celebrate all of our birthdays and those who have one. But it's prayer time. It's prayer time. You may have been going through something. There might be an issue in your life. You can't call the psychic hotline. You can't call your girlfriend or BBF, right? Texting one another, pray for me. This is your opportunity to come and to pray for yourself. As we extend an invitation to come to the altar where you can have conversation with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. You can tell him all about it and he'll work things out for you. We're going to ask that Deacon, o Deacon Odell Chisholm would come and lead us to the throne of grace. This is your opportunity to lay your concerns at an all an all supplying God who is able to do anything but fail. Morning, church. Let us pray. Our Lord and our God, it is once again to come before your throne of grace. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. Father God, we ask that you look down upon us this morning. If it be your will, remove anything that will hinder this prayer. Bless now as only you can, because we know that you have all power. Father, we come thanking you for our lying down last night and our rising this morning. We thank you because you're such a wonderful God. We thank you for all the provision that you provide. We thank you most of all for your son, Jesus the Christ, who have died and gone on that we might have life and have it more abundant. But Lord, we ask that you look down upon those that are less fortunate than we are. Somebody is lying down in the hospital this morning. Somebody's in a nursing home. 
Somebody didn't even wake up this morning. But Lord, everything that happened, we believe that it happened because of your will. But we just say thank you. Thank you for all your many blessings that you bestowed. Father God, we ask that you look upon every young child this morning that has have to go to school each and every day. We ask that you touch the teachers that have to provide wisdom and knowledge to these children. We ask that you continue to lift them up and inspire them to do what they do. Lord God, we ask that you continue to bless the parents that they will be able to provide for their children. But most of all, we ask that you touch them that they have wisdom and knowledge to be able to keep them in your will. In Jesus' name we pray. Lord God, we ask that you look upon those that are standing around the altar this morning. We don't know what their needs are, but we know that you do. And we ask Heavenly Father that you grant them their wishes this morning. Touch right now in the mighty name of your son Jesus, each and every person one by one. Not only at the altar, Father, that somebody is standing around in the pew. Somebody is in need of some help this morning. Somebody's body is wrapped with pain. Somebody might be going through all kinds of problems, but whatever it is, you know. So Lord, we just ask that you say that we have any problem at all. Come before the altar and leave it there and you'll take care of it. So we just ask that you touch each and every heart that are standing before the altar this morning and give them the wisdom and the understanding and the belief that you would do what you say you would do. And that they would leave their burden at the altar and it would be satisfied in your will at your time. Bless those that have lost loved ones along the way, people that is in bereavement. Somebody this morning is fatherless, somebody is motherless. Somebody doesn't have a sister or brother this morning. But whatever the case may be, touch each and every person's heart, knowing that we all have a dying soul to save. That we might one day look up and see you smiling in our face. And we want to say thank you, Heavenly Father, for the days that you have granted us down this far. Father, we ask that you touch our pastor in his absence. Bless him and his family. But most of all, we ask that you put your loving arm of protection around Reverend Waters this morning as he brings forth the word that he might be able to lift up some downhearted soul that we might have joy in our heart when we leave here this afternoon. God, and oh, Heavenly Father, and continue to bless him. Keep him comfortable. Keep his family within your bound. In the mighty name of your son, Jesus. Bless us, oh, Heavenly Father, that when we leave this place, we won't leave you. That we will remember you for all that you've done. Bless the choir this morning, bless the Brandon and his family as they come before us and they singing such a joyful song that we might be inspired by the song and the music that is being sung this morning. Guide us and continue to help us not to be unfaithful for you have provided all these things for us. In the mighty name of your son Jesus we pray. Amen. Amen.
kingdom of his son. Into the kingdom of his son. Forgiven of my sin. Forgiven of my sin.
choir. Thank you, thank you, choir. You can have this old world, but I'll take Jesus for mine. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, Pastor, for this opportunity. We'd just like to say, do not take it lightly, but always saying thank you for an opportunity to come and to share uh, this, this great responsibility that he bestows upon me. Thank you for this opportunity to be able to come and to share with the people here at the St. John's Baptist Church. Shall we pray? Our Father and our God, Lord, we're thankful for this opportunity to come and share a word with you about you. God, we pray now that the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart might be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our Redeemer. God, we pray now, God, that it would touch the people's heart, touch them that they would be better for when they, than when they came in. God, we pray now in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 And thank God. This morning, I would like to, from the book of James, the book of James, chapter 2, starting at verse 21. Was not Abraham our father? justified by works when he had offered Isaac his son upon the altar? Seest thou how faith wrought with his works and by works was faith made perfect? Verse 23 as our verse for consideration. And the scripture was fulfilled which saith Abraham believed God and it was imputed unto him for righteousness. And he called, and he was called the friend of God. I wanna speak for, for this moment that is ours today, a friend of God, a friend of God. Uh, now I wanna discuss that. Well, that don't go that way. I wanna discuss that to say that uh, everybody needs a friend. Everybody needs a friend. A friend uh, is a necessity for human growth and for our personal development. Uh, I wanna talk about this friendship for everybody needs that friend. Uh, authors, uh, you know, they suggest that the persons who live their entire life without a genuine friend. A genuine friend, uh, they would have had be a great tragedy in their life to go through one's life without a friend. For no man is an island or a woman is an island unto themselves. And we all need someone. We need someone to attempt uh, to would be good to, if not, we would be living in, in, in an exile, away from everybody. And we don't, we, as human beings, we aren't built that way to live in a vacuum away from everybody, to live and establish oneself as an island of self-exile, exilization, the island apart from the main. But without a friend, uh, it, is like, it is like John the Revelator being placed out on the Isle of Patmos, far from the crossroads of human interaction, being there all alone, an, anal an alienation from all company and contact with human beings. Without a friend, one knows uh, the self-imposed uh, self solidarity uh, or concealment where the only conversation one would have would be a monologue with oneself. In other words, you could only talk 
to yourself. I know some of us do talk to ourselves, but imagine a lifestyle of you're the only one who can talk. Everybody needs somebody and everybody needs a friend. In your life and in my life, we need somebody who, who, who is loving and also loyal. We need somebody uh, who is trusted and true. Uh, someone uh, who is willing to be your confidant and your counselor. We need somebody uh, who will be willing, uh, willing to be with us and be devoted to us even in our dark, desperate hours. Uh, the present moments or your present moments of pain and being sympathetic to whatever your situation might be. For everybody needs a friend. Yeah, I've come here today to remind you that God, that, that, that a good friend is hard to find. Or everybody with whom you might be friendly is not necessarily a good friend. Right. Everyone to whom you have social interaction and relationships with uh, may not be, is not a genuine friend. Somebody told me a long time ago that uh, be careful of, of who you choose as your friends. Uh, it is a truism that a man is known by the f company he keeps. The company that he keeps, whether, whether you like it or not. The world judges you uh, by the quality and the character of the persons that you call friends. Everybody that claims to be your friend may not be your friend after all. It, it does not make a difference. Uh, uh, it doesn't matter what the nature of the friendship is. It, it can't even be a biological connection that one has or a social connection that one might have or a work companion but or a political relationship there may be. But it looks like they might not be your friend. Well, what are you saying? Cain and Abel. Cain and Abel. They had the same DNA. They came from the same biological makeup. They were brothers by blood and related by common parent parents. But the Bible says that Cain went out and slew his brother Abel in the field. Jacob and Esau. Jacob and Esau, twin brothers sharing the same egg, same, sharing the same egg, the twin children of Isaac and Rebekah. But the Bible says that Jacob got in cahoots with his mother. She cheated, conned and connived and deceived him and lied so much that even Esau lost his inheritance all behind a piece, a pot of, a piece of meat and a pot of beans. Come here, Sansom, Sansom and Delilah. They were lovers, right? Delilah proves that even, even then you can, you, have to, you can be a friend, but not a friend. She cut off Samson's hair so he would lose his strength. Even in their love relationship, she betrayed him as not really being a friend. Uh, come here, Job. Job had three friends. You remember, he had, who was that, Eliphaz? He had Eliphaz, Bildad, and Zephar. You know, they was all his friends while he, was, while he had everything going on. But soon as things got rough, soon as things, the rubber meets the road, right? Soon as things got rough, they turned, they wouldn't say a word to him. It was almost like they did not denied him. But even then, when we look at Jesus, even Jesus, with his three most trusted people, his three of his closest disciples, uh, couldn't be counted on Peter, James, and John. They couldn't stay awake when he went into the garden of Gethsemane, right? They couldn't stay awake. They, they, they had to go back and get their rest, right? Here was, here was Deacon Thomas, you know, Thomas, even Thomas who was with them. Thomas, the one who ended up doubting who Jesus was. You know, and Judas, of course, we know the treasurer. That treasurer, 
of the disciples sold and sold Jesus for 30 pieces of silver. Couldn't trust him either. Right. Couldn't trust him either. And then as long before Hezekiah Walker even thought about being sold out, Judas had already sold out our Lord. I, I, I say all of that. Right. I, I say all of that to say to support uh, the subordinate to the claim to support the claim that everybody needs a friend and that good friend a real friend uh, the friend uh, in the hard is hard to come by right husbands and wives right they can live in the same house share the same bed right eat at the same table and still not be friends I know I'm talking to somebody maybe even myself but there are so many who have no friends, no friends, and they, they, they don't make themselves available, you know. And one thing is, if you want to be friendly, you have to find yourself to be friendly. The Bible says that you have to show yourself to be friendly in order to have a friend, in order to have a friend. And you can't expect to have a friend if you don't know how to be a friend. And, it, and if you if you if you have a friend, you ought to thank God for the friendship. Yeah, I, I've learned to thank God for my friends, you know, all three of them. That's about all I got. You know, you know, let, let, let's not fool ourselves. Everybody is not your friend. Who, who, who Who's going to be with you in the midnight hour? Who's going to be at you, with you when you're at your lowest point? You know, who's going to be with you? Everybody wants to be there with the winner. Everybody wants to be with you when you got it going on. You know, would Jeff say, you know, when you big baller, shot caller, right? Pastor Brian would say that one, right? Pack pockets bulging, got plenty of money. Everybody want to be with you then. But who's going to be with you? Who is that that's going to be with you when down is looking down on you? What a friend. What a friend. What is a friend? Well, I'm glad you asked that question. For a friend by definition, according to the, the dictionary, says that it defines one as a person who knows, likes, and trusts. Second Definition was, can be an acquaintance. And the third one says, a person in whom one is aligned with in a struggle or a cause. Well, I like that third part because we're all in a struggle. The person to whom you are allied with. Uh, for I hear the words of Paul resounding through the echoes and the corridors of time saying that there's a war going on. Right. Against the rulers of darkness and, and against this world and against the spiritual wickedness in high places. Right. So so this struggle that's going on, we need to align ourselves with the one who is in this struggle with us. And that name is Jesus. Well, what does it take to be that friend of God? But long before Israel Horton and New Breeze said, I am a friend of God, God himself had to make a few friends. In the beginning, there was Adam and Eve, right? When he would go down into, into the garden and meet with them. There was Enoch, who was God's friend. He was such a good friend to God that he would not see death. Come here, Moses. Moses, that leader who led the children of Israel uh, out of bondage to freedom. You know, Isaiah, God's prophet, uh, whose lips were touched by the burning coals from his altar. Right. There was Solomon, you know, who had most of God, who had knowledge and wisdom given to him by God. You know, all kinds of people. And even the prophet Ezekiel, who was God's preacher, who had to go preach in the cemetery. My, my, trying to raise the dead. Nehemiah, God's general contractor, the one who decide, who was there to rebuild the walls of, of Jerusalem. And of course, we all know about David, David being God's eye. He was he was that, that apple of God's eye. All were friends. 
But Abraham, Abram, uh, the father of the many nations, it was only Abraham who, who said he was called a friend of God. And that, that's why I raised the question, what does it take to be a friend of God? Perhaps you want to know uh, what it was between Abraham and God. What, what was it that they had between them? Uh, yeah, he, he already uh, has dominion. What was it that was between them? He had, he had dominion and the devotion of his son. Who, God has the dominion and devotion of his son who sits at the, the right hand of his father. Also, he has, sitting on his left hand, he has the Holy Ghost. He already has that. So what, what really does it take? Does God really need another friend? Yeah, but I'm curious to discover how close am I to reaching that Abraham status, that Abraham status to be known as a friend of God. Uh, first of all, I would like to suggest that they had a relationship. They had a relationship. They had a relationship, Abraham and God, they had a solid relationship. Well, God could, would see that Abraham uh, had his priorities in the right position. Yeah, you, 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 you see a good friend isn't always looking to get something from you. A good friend is willing to take whatever comes along, whatever comes his or her way. Uh, do you do recall the occasion when Abraham, when Abram, whose name was changed to Abra Abraham and Lot, they went, they had, they had a controversy as to who would claim the land. Those, 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 those lovely hills and valleys and waters that were watered so green. And they, when they got to that, to that land, they, they asked them, they said, well, who's going to take the best land? And Lot jumped up and said, well, I want the most fertile pieces and parcels of land. Uh, Lot wanted the land that was good with pastures and plenty of water and good green grass. But Abraham, Abraham says to God that I'll take whatever you give me, long as it comes from you, God. Yeah, I, 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 I'm not worried about the land that you're going to give me. Uh, my priorities are not in the property or not in the prosperity, but the God I serve is that the, and that the earth is his, is God's. The earth, the cattle on a thousand hills, all belong to God, is his. And, and, the, gold, and the gold is his and the silver and, and the gold. So if he wants to really be a friend, I'll take whatever you give me, as long as it comes from God. And, and if you want to be God's friends, you have to have your priorities in order. The priorities must be in the proper alignment with God, you know, not about possessions. It's not about that, but it's about having a prosperous prayer life, about having a relationship in your heart with God, honoring God's words and doing the will of God, you know, doing that will of God. For I've heard even Jesus would say in Mark to seek ye first, though, the kingdom of God and all these other things shall be added unto you. So they have you have to have a relationship with God. And then secondly, you must have that communication with God. You have to have communication with God. His friendship between Abraham and God uh, was predicted uh, on, on, the, on at least the first day that they knew. They, they talked to each other on a daily basis. Well, they maintained constant communication. Uh, they, they didn't always see eye to eye. But they would, they were able to disagree, but they were not disagreeable, right? They, 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 there was a time when the issue would come up and they were good friends that can argue with you and still be on the same team. Uh, good friends, uh, you know, they can, they can disagree, but yet refuse to be disagreeable. And so good friends, uh, need, need not always to be on your side. To be a good friend, you've got to tell somebody when it's wrong, it's wrong. And when it's right, you're right. And not always being right. Right? And they used to say, what? If it's right, it's tight. And they'll tighten up on them shoes. Ouch, ouch, my feet hurt. Right? Because you know when the truth hurts you. 
Right. So you have to be able to discern that as to when when it's right, when it's right. And so we see that that happened. So you remember that God and Abraham were good friends, but they did have an argument one day. Well, not really an argument, but they had an issue. And when they went down to uh, the uh, lot, wanted to go down to um, Sodom and Gomorrah. And so God wanted to destroy the cities. And so Abraham starts talking back to God. And in this conversation, he tell he asked God now, if you find 50 people who are righteous, will you spare it? Uh, there are 40 people and he counts them down to 10 and finally to one. And he could find none. But God says, well, you got a good point there, Abraham. You got a good point. If I find just one, I won't destroy the city. Well, what, I, what I'm trying to say is that Abraham and God, they were good friends. But because they communicated, uh, the friends, because they talked to each other, that he had that you are going to be that friend of God. And you're going to have to talk to God if you're going to be a friend of God. You're going to have to constantly pray to God and not only making your pray a monologue, but the prayer should be a dialogue. And one should always allow a space in your prayer time to listen to God. So don't just now lay me down to sleep, pray the Lord my soul to keep, get off them knees and go to bed. You ought to listen, you know, or Lord, I need you right now. Lord, make a way. Get up and go. You ought to take a moment. Listen to God so you can hear what God might have to be able to say to you. Right. Because I can hear like the songwriter said, for I've come to the garden alone. Right. While the dew is still on the roses and the voice that I hear falling on my ear is the son of God discloses and he walks with me and he talks with me and he tells me that I'm his own. And the joy that we share as we tarry there. You got to wait there and tarry to hear from God. And that's what some many of us don't do. We don't tarry and we don't wait to hear from God. We get up and we go on about our business thinking that God is just going to take care of it. And he doesn't. Sometimes you got to wait and tarry. So you have to have a relationship with God. You have to have communication with God. And then you have to have obedience to God, obedience to God. And this element of friendship that God discovered uh, that he found that his that Abraham's quality of faithful obedience. When God told Abraham to go. He didn't have any questions about it. God said, Abraham, there are two things that I'm going to tell you. And the first is that I want you to get out from your country, right? I want you to leave your kindred and your kinsmen and go to a country that I will show you. Uh, you I'm going to show you this, but I'm not going to give you a road map. There was, I'm not going to give you a compass. I'm not going to, you're not going to be able to use your navigation or your ways. Yeah, but I'm just going to tell you of a place where I want you to go. Uh, and so God, when he tells you to do something, you ought to do it and take God at his word. Uh, you can go where I tell you. And when God tells you to do something, you ought to do it. For there we see the obedience of Abraham. For the, we know that the obedience was better than the sacrifice. And even though you, you don't understand it sometimes. You still just want to be obedient. You want to be obedient. You want to make sure that it's clear with you and it's satisfied with you. When we walk, when we walk with the Lord in the light of his word, what a glory he sheds our way. While we do his good, his good will abounds us still. And with all us, trust and obey. Trust and obey that there is no other way to be happy in Jesus but to trust and obey. 
And since you have proven yourself to be faithful, uh, I, I'm going to change your name because you remember that Abraham's name was Abram. But I'm going to change your name. I'm going to change your identity. I'm going to change your relationship. I'm going to change the manner in which people see you. I'm going to change your heart. Well, you know, I, I'm going to change a few names. God changed a few names along the way. You, you do know that. He changed a few names along the way. Jacob, I changed your name to Israel. Right. Saul, I changed your name to Paul. Sari, I changed your name to Sarah. And Simon, I changed your name to Peter. And your name, Abraham, used to be Abram. But we changed your name. We used to know you as a dealer. But now we know you as deacon. We used to call you stripper. But now we know you as sister, right? We know your name used to be Tricky, but now we know you as a trustee. Your name used to be called Player, but now they call you Preacher, they call you Pastor, they call you Potentate. Well, they call you Doc, right? Uh, won't, won't he do it? If anybody can, he can change your name. Won't he do it? Yes, he can. Uh, and if you want to be God's friend, well, you have to be able to know that your name has been changed. You know, I'm so glad that I know my name's been changed. For the angels in heaven have changed my name. But this friendship, uh, it had something else special in, in common. Uh, they had they had something to talk about, you know, and that's one thing you have to have with your friend is something to talk about. Well, well, when it, both of them, they had lives that experienced significant births in their life. The birth announcements kind of went like this. Well, yeah, at the tender age of 100 years old, Father Abraham is pleased to announce the birth of his son Isaac. But if when God makes a birth announcement, his birth announcement of his son, he dispatched a legion of angels. They had said that herald the good news, unto you is born this day in the city of David, the savior, which is Christ the King. Well, the significant birth of Isaac came uh, into play when God told Abraham to take his only begotten son up to Mount Moriah and there to lay him on on the altar of sacrifice. Well, you, you should have seen that day. I could imagine in my mind that Abraham took his only son up to that altar and he says, he looks around and he says, well, I know I'm at the Mount of Sacrifice. Ah, I see the altar. Ah, I see the wood. And, but I, I, I don't see, I don't see the sacrifice. Well, I don't, I don't see that sacrifice. Well, it took God, it took God some 40 and two generations to answer Abraham's question. It took him 40 and two generations to, where, to answer that question of where is the sacrifice? And God told Abraham, uh, I, had, uh, I had to wait those 42 years uh, why you did so I could bring my son into the world. But God told Abraham, I had to let your son live so through your son, we'd be able to save a nation. We'd be able to start a nation. Well, because in Isaac, there was Jacob. There was Joseph Jacob. There was Reuben, Simeon, and Levi. In, in Jacob, there was Judah, Zebulon, and Issachar. Yeah, in, 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 in Jacob, there was Dan, Gad, and Asher. And in I had to let them live so we could save the nation. But Abraham, but God says to Abraham, says, Abraham, my son died. My son died to save the world. 
and that through, the, through him you might be saved. My son died to answer your question. My son died to answer that question of where is the sacrifice? Where is the lamb? For he is the lamb of God. He is the lamb that takes away the sins of the world. For on that Friday, they took him from judgment hall to judgment hall. They made him carry an old rugged cross up to a place called Golgotha's Hill, up to the place known as the Skull. And they placed that cross between two thieves. And then they lifted him up. And I don't know how you feel about it when they stuck, when they lifted him up. They might have made a mistake then because they lifted him up for all the world to see. They put a crown of thorns on his head. They pierced him in his ever bleeding side. And his blood flows down, covers all of our sins. That was the sacrifice. That was God being the friend. And it was through Abraham that we are able to get that friend, that friend of Jesus Christ. But he didn't stay dead. Thank God they put him in a borrowed tomb. And if you know, like some people know, or at least they should know, that anything borrowed has to be given back. So early on Sunday morning, he got up out the grave, had all power in his hand. He has power over life, power over death, power over sickness. Because he had to give back that borrowed tomb and anything that's borrowed has to be given back and so that's the friend that I want to introduce someone to today one who's able to put you back in right circumstance with God making you righteous making you righteous where you're right with God and that's what they did when you become a friend of God you become right with God and you can face whatever comes your way knowing that you've got Jesus with you you've got Jesus with you to fight your battles you don't have to be alone in a vacuum with Jesus You've got one that sticks closer to you than any brother. You've got one who won't forsake you nor leave you for another. You've got Jesus to fight all of your battles. Shall we stand? So if you're looking for that friend today, I just stopped by to tell you, you got a friend in Jesus. And this is your opportunity to accept him, to accept Jesus as your personal savior. One who will be with you through thick and thin, won't leave you when things get bad. There's an opportunity for one as we open the doors of the church, extend an invitation Extend an invitation. Even though they said we was all family here today. I wouldn't want pastor to say I didn't open the doors of the church. As protocol. This is your opportunity to turn your life over to Jesus. Notice I didn't say come and join St. John's. You looking online, this is your opportunity to turn your life over to Jesus. And join the despised few. Is there one who may want to offer Jesus? We offer Jesus. But if you're looking for a church home, please consider the St. John's Baptist Church where the Bible is taught preaching, singing. It might be your opportunity to learn more about the Son of God. 
It's your opportunity to do that at this time. If not, shall we pray? God, our Father, Lord, we come saying thank you, God. Thank you for another opportunity to come and to share, to share in your words. Lord, we pray now, God, that you will be with your people, Lord. You know what they stand in the need of. And God, we ask that you would meet those needs. Meet the needs as only you can. You're the one who will never leave us nor forsake us. You, the one who provides for us. And oh God, we ask that you would be there with them. Continue to be with them. Be with your people. Those who may be sick, we know that you're able to heal. And we claim healing right now in the name of Jesus. And Lord, any way that you choose to bless us, oh God, we'll be ever so careful to give your name the praise, honor and glory, which is all yours. Lord, we know you are, you are able to do anything but fail. And so God, we ask that you would bless your people. Be that hedge of protection around them, oh God. Watch over our children, oh Lord, as they go to and from school. Watch them while they're at school. And oh God, watch over our seniors, oh Lord, as we go to and from to markets or wherever we may be. God, we just ask and we love you. We love you and we thank you. you they thank you for the protection that you provide for us. And most of all, we thank you for your son, Jesus. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. And praise God. But before we leave and depart this place, it's offering time. 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 The ways to give are, are on the screens. The ways to give are on the screens. Those who are online, you can see that, that you can send Giveify, Cash App, Zelle, or you can mail to the church, the U.S. mail. And if you're here in the sanctuary and you have a tangible gift, you can deposit that at the exit doors as our trustees shall be gladly waiting for you as you exit the building. We thank you for what you have done, but we're going to pray again. Our Father and our God, we say thank you for those who have given, those who had a mind to give, but maybe not the, the means. Lord, we, we pray that those who are supporting ministry would not go without but we know that you're able to supply all of our needs. And whatever we might need, oh God, we're depending on you to meet it. Now, God, we pray for God's people as we care to leave this place, but never from your presence. Now unto him who is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the throne of grace. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory, majesty, dominion, and power, now, henceforth, and forevermore. Amen, amen, and praise God.